Um, most certainly, uh, I'm going to just duck quickly. Uh, often, yeah, the lines are just to the left of us. You can just see that's just a roof that we have on. Sorry, David, I'm going to get to your question now. You can see the eyes as well every now and then from the zebra. We've parked on a horrible angle. I do apologize for just straightening out the camera. Uh, they will, and it might not be a reprimanding that y you and I would know when you would discipline a child. Uh, it often ends up in growling, sometimes even swatting at the youngsters, or even just exposing their teeth. And and I think I think they got too excited, these little ones. They were left in the drainage line, but they've also been sleeping for most of the day. So they've got all this pent-up energy. And you know what young children are like? They bounce off the walls when you try to put them to bed. And that's exactly what happens here. They don't want to do what's told. Now sit down in the grass, little ones, because a zebra are going to spot you. Now it's not over just yet for these lionesses. They could still use the wind and of course the rumbling of the thunder and the pitch black of the night to move around in a better position for uh, an opportunity to hunt. The zebra are just out of view. They're just sort of at the edge of where the light ends. They're not very far. I'm going to put my spotlight on again. I want to have a look. There are so many of them. I'm also scanning for that other lioness because I wonder if she hasn't gone around. Hmm. Where on earth did you go? Like I said, there were two adult lionesses here, so I don't know where she's disappeared. Can you see her? No, I can't see her. I don't know where she's gone. She completely disappeared in this long grass and we can scan and scan and scan, but I think she's actually moved off completely. Uh, I've spoken about the various hunting techniques of lions before, and it's one that we see the lions doing uh, quite a bit of in South Africa. And obviously, like I said, we're in Kenya now, uh, in the Mara Triangle, and one lion, if it's a big pride of lions, will normally go around and try and chase the prey towards another lion sitting in the grass just waiting. That Maybe that's going to happen, but that'll be a little bit dangerous tonight, especially with those cubs now being out in the open and completely exposed. That would not be a very good idea. The hooves of a zebra, of a buffalo, could quite easily trample those cubs to death, and that would be really, really sad. We would not want that to happen, but it, that's what nature is about, of course. It's not always good news for the little ones. Sometimes the prey end up winning, and I've been seeing a lot of that recently. Now, Jack, you're wondering how long will the cubs stay with their parents? Jack, it actually depends on the sex of the lion. So if it is a female lion, she'll probably stay within the pride for the rest of her life. However, in this area, we do see a lot of lions breaking away from, from main prides and forming sort of little sub-prides. Uh, if you're a boy, if you're a male lion, then typically you, when you get to the ages of about two two and a half years old, the big resident males are going to not tolerate you like they did when you were younger, and then the process of being pushed out starts. So anywhere from about two to three years old, uh, they'll start going off and searching. Well, it's actually, it's very tough life for young males once they leave uh, their pride. Um, they aren't big enough and strong enough to take on the other males in the area. So they sort of have to live in between the territories of the big of the big males and they become nomadic. It's a very tough life for them. A lot of males don't make it to adulthood. Now, Karen, you're wondering if the scent, not if the wind keeps the scent away from uh, the zebra. Uh, uh, typically, yes, it would, and that all depends if they're downwind of the zebra. The wind is swirling quite a bit. When we first found this pride this afternoon, the wind was actually coming uh, from a completely different direction. It was sort of more coming from, uh, the, I suppose, the southwest, blowing up towards the zebra and buffalo. We didn't have zebra already. It was just a huge herd of buffalo. And now it's changed. Now it's swirling below. below. We're just at the base of the escarpment. So every now and then they have the wind in their favor, but then every other sort of minute it changes. And I think the scent is blowing towards the zebra. And I wonder if that's what startled those zebra. Now, Kate, 
You're wondering how far can a lion see in the dark? It's a difficult one to answer. I've never looked through a lion's eyes before, but their eyesight is exceptionally good, and it, and it really is spectacular at, at night. You can imagine a zebra, a wildebeest, a uh, buffalo can't really see very well at night. They have better eyesight during the day, but the predators come alive at night. So the way that their eyes are designed, um, it allows them to take in light, and that's why you see that sort of white stripe underneath the lion's eye that help reflects light back in to their eyes so that they can utilize it and actually see a little bit better. So I, I'm not exactly sure in distance how far away they'd be able to see, but definitely much further than you and I. Well, I can't see anything at the moment. It's complete darkness. Now, Carla, you're wondering how old are females before they become a mom? Well, I, I would say that a lioness will come into estrus for the first time, maybe around between two and a half and three and a half years old. But just like you and I are completely different, the same thing applies to animals out here. Some might mature a little bit quicker than others. Some might take a little bit longer. And they might not even breed in their f within their first estrus cycle. But she's up again. She's scanning around. Look how tall the grass is. So it's actually going, should be quite easy for her tonight to hunt because she's got so many things on her side. She's got the wind. We'll just quickly recap in case there are any new viewers who have just joined us. So she's got the wind. She's got the darkness. There's clouds. And yesterday was full moon. So she's lucky about that because if the moon was out, oh, they would have, the zebra and the wildebeest and the buffalo would have spotted her from miles away. And, and then she's got the rumbling of the thunder. And then, of course, this tall grass is fantastic. Look how they completely disappear in it. Just see their ears. Now, a common misconception and that a lot of people will sort of hear, and they hear that lions and most of the predators only hunt at night. And, Leah, you're wondering exactly that. Lions are opportunistic feeders, so they will hunt whenever they want to hunt. Sometimes a warthog may stumble across a pride of sleeping lions in the long grass, or the same thing might happen with a wildebeest or a zebra. They're not going to say no to it. They will most certainly charge after it, so they take any opportunities that they can get. But it looks like everything has calmed down for the moment, but I suspect we'll sit here for just a little bit longer and see if things develop. I am going to say goodbye to all of you who are watching this live broadcast, but um, keep a look out for that notification because you never know what might happen next.